And we welcome you to Conversations with Coach. First time we're doing it here on Bearcats Digital. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Matt Noonan here with you. Uh, hope everybody's doing well. Hope you're safe and healthy and uh, looking forward uh, to the return of Bearcats Athletics. Hopefully not uh, too far off, but uh, in the meantime, great opportunity here to have some conversations with our coaches and uh, look forward to uh, everything coming up. Celebrate everything that has happened here over the last year at UC Athletics. And for our first conversation with Coach, we've got a special guest joining us today as we will bring in UC women's basketball head coach, Michelle Clark Heard. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. I hope uh, you're doing well. Hope uh, you're you're safe and healthy. And uh, I, I can't decide if it feels like just yesterday we last uh, talked or uh, felt like uh, almost over a year ago. It's kind of both at the same time, but uh, a lot's happened. And it's really good to see you again. Well, good to see you, too, and just really glad to, uh, yeah, we're all safe and happy, uh, just, you know, uh, and healthy, and I think just really just trying to, uh, basically, like everyone else, just trying to uh, figure out the new norm. Yep, certainly. Well, uh, you know, uh, here, a chance today for us to uh, talk about, uh, you know, what was another great season uh, for you and your team, and uh, it really felt like you guys were able to to build on that that momentum uh, of year number one. Uh, you know, you had one of the, the best seasons really in 15 years, your first year out, and you built built on that year number two, best winning percentage since 20, uh, 2003, best conference finish since 2003. But it felt like you took another step forward, and that's that's what you're looking to see. Well, I think a lot of credit goes to those seniors and all the work that they put in to just continue to help us get better and better and just really uh, – helping pave the way. And it was just, uh, again, I know we all say it and this has happened, you know, I hate uh, the way everything ended uh, for them. Uh, but boy, did they really every single day just bring everything to the table for us and give everything they had. And uh, you're right, uh, we took another step. And uh, I think it's just awesome to see uh, how far this program has came since the staff and I uh, have arrived. Yeah, you know, you talk about uh, this senior class. I mean, it, it feels, I can think back to when they were freshmen. It's what it was my first year here at UC, so I've always kind of had a, a you know a, they've had a special place in my heart. But it, you could tell when they came in the, it, the mentality that they brought in, along with their skill, that they felt like a class that could change the program, and they really have. Well, yeah, and I think uh, for me, I think the greatest part too was just to be able to coach them uh, for these past you know two years, but then to add uh, you know Florence uh, in the mix with that group. Uh, and just how she was able to just come in and be able to connect with them and help take us also to a, to another level, just athletically, uh, just the things that she brought to the table. And then I think the most important thing was watching everyone grow. Uh, all those seniors just grew so much from the first day, uh, you know, we arrived. And that's from, you know, Antoinette to Angel to Sam. And, uh, you know, I think Ant uh, was, the, was the focal point because of that point guard position. Uh, that she always had to show up and really, uh, you know, she had to take take me also too. Uh, you know that uh, that point guard is a big uh, resemblance, I think, of the head coach, and uh, she really just took on a lot of those things. But you know, when you look at Sam Rogers and everything she's done, and being you know a hometown girl and just being able to make huge shots for us, she was the general on the floor. Uh, you know, Aunt was the point guard, uh, but Sam always did all the talking and leading, and you know, and then you have Angel who just grew and grew more and more. And I think it's evident from, you know, her most improved award from her junior to her senior year. Yeah, it was kind of funny when um, she was announced for the, the most improved award. I, I was kind of two minds on it. You know, for me, it was, it was kind of a surprise thinking, I, Angel was already pretty good. It's kind of hard mm -hmm. for me to think of her as being most improved, but you really do look at her career. It seemed like, you know, from freshman to sophomore, sophomore to junior, and then junior to senior, she really did increase that that ability every year and that, I think that really is a hallmark of her career. Well and I think the biggest thing that I was so excited about is just her growth and her leadership. Man she led this young group she led those the young the freshmen and uh, just everyone just trying to be the best that she could be and it just really helped us it helped us uh, be in we can grow and that they all can lean on each other uh, the senior class and we went through a lot of different adversity through different things and uh, we were able to find ways uh, for different people to step up at different times. And I think it all really played back to the leadership of that group. 
Certainly. Well, uh, the, there's no doubt, uh, you know, your seniors are always going to be a, a huge building block of success. And it was no different with this team. You know, we, we look back, I think, kind of go back to the beginning of the year and in the non-conference portion of the schedule. Uh, you started in a big way. You had Utah come in from the Pac-12, got a big win over them on uh, opening night. Uh, later on, we had uh, Pitt come in from the ACC, you got a win over them too. But uh, I know you talked about coming in you wanted to schedule these big out of conference games. And, uh, you know, that's something that we've already seen. And I'm sure that's something that you want to continue to do. Well, it's just really important. It's important for us because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, everyone wants to play the best and you want to be in a situation where you can continue to keep getting better and better. Uh, that's just something I've always done in my career as a head coach. And that's something that uh, I love to have our uh, players be in those positions. Uh, and I also do it for the fans, uh, you know, to be able to, uh, bring great uh, teams into, you know, fifth third where people recognize, uh, you know, who they are nationally from different conferences and everything else. So just really uh, uh, just take those things for uh, uh, a big opportunity for our program and try to make sure that we're utilizing that. And you're right. It was it was great to play a Pac-12 uh, team, ACC team. Uh, and we're working uh, hard for uh, our non-conference schedule again for this season for we can be the same way. And, you know, the home court advantage of this team has been phenomenal since you came here, since we got the brand new uh, Fifth Third Arena renovations. You guys have been winning about 90% or more of the time. And I know you've talked about it a lot, the the new setup of the arena. It, it really works to enhance that, that home court advantage. When we get fans packed in there, it gets loud. And your team really feeds off that. Well, and I think that's something that we – I feed off it too as a coach. Uh, you know, it's a great place to coach at. Uh, that atmosphere and that environment is incredible, uh, but just for our girls and for the players. And uh, I think the, the best part for me is when the opposing coach always says to me, what a beautiful place and a beautiful arena uh, that is. And it just really means a lot. It, it means a lot. And that home court advantage means a lot, especially uh, if you want to make sure that you're having a great season and getting off to a good start, you got to take care of your home court. Well, uh, Coach, we're seeing uh, seeing it on the screen right now uh, that uh, that VCU uh, win. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'm, we're, I'm going to go back. I want to cue up this video because that was, I feel like, really a turning point in the season. Before we get to the final play, um, you know, kind of going into this game, let, let's set the stage. Your team, uh, you know, you had some of those big non-conference wins, but you were coming off of uh, two close losses in, in Puerto Rico. Rico. And, yeah. uh, and, Ant and Antoinette Miller had also, uh, you know, she had got, got banged up a little bit. We weren't sure how bad the injury was. Fortunately, it wasn't too bad when she was back shortly after that. But that, that stage of the season really felt like, you know, a big difference maker. And for your team to respond on the road against a good team like BCU and get that win, I mean, that felt like really maybe the, the launching pad for the rest of the season. Well, I think you said it, uh, you know, you're right. We went to Puerto Rico, had two tough losses. Uh, and uh, I think that was a time for us to reflect, uh, to be able to really be in a position where we needed to figure out who we were and what our identity was going to be. Um, when we got back in town, uh, again, Antoinette, uh, as you said, um, you know, it got banged up a little and uh, wasn't comfortable uh, because of her previous, uh, you know, different surgeries and injuries. And so, uh, Wanted to make sure we got her checked out because at the end of the day, it's all about their health. And uh, so she she had to get scoped uh, and she got scoped. And, uh, you know, so this was a different time for some of our young players and different people to step up. And this is where you really start to realize where Angel and, and Sam and, and, and Florence actually uh, were so crucial to what we were trying to do. Uh, but that was not the only adversity. So we traveled there and we're without uh, Antoinette, our first trip without her. Uh, and first time with her not being on the floor as our point guard. Uh, and then we get there and uh, we also find out that Florence Sifa lost her brother uh, the night before we played. Uh, so another uh, tragic that hit our team. Uh, but, uh, you know, the team rallied around Florence and uh, Fofo wanted to play. Uh, and she she played and, uh, man, uh, different people just stepped up. And so that's leading into uh, a lot of the adversity and why that game meant so much to our program and to our team. Yeah, no question about it. That was, uh, you know, just kind of a moment with the team, you know, rallying together and, and supporting each other. And you talked about, you know, the support that uh, Florence, uh, you know, got from her teammates in a tough time and, and her going out and and really playing one of her best games in a tough time for mm -hmm. her. I mean, that, that that meant so much to so many people. Um, 
but now we got to look at the end of that game and the finish. I know you've been coaching for a long time. You've probably seen uh, some crazy finishes before, but have you, have you ever seen anything uh, quite no. like this that we saw? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Uh, I've been I've been a part of some amazing wins, and uh, but this one was incredible just for the simple fact of how uh, just the resilience of his team and the not, and the ability to not quit and keep going and not just be satisfied that we tied the game. Uh, to make yeah. sure that we got into the defense uh, right after we scored the basket. And I thought, think that was huge. Yeah, so we'll go through it here uh, right now on the screen. It was uh, uh, one of your freshmen. Uh, yeah, getting, Chella. Uh, Watson, yeah, Chella Watson getting the tying basket. And then, like you said, you went right in the defense. And to get that instant turnover and Angel, uh, absolute yeah. perfect shot there. Yes, and and actually it was another freshman. It was Jordan who actually got the tip. She was another – it was two freshmen on the floor at that time. And she got the tip that allowed uh, Angel to get the ball and get the shot off. And I think the coolest moment was going back in the locker room after we won and uh, basically having uh, Ant on, uh, you know, on FaceTime and celebrating with her um, because she wasn't there. And uh, so it was pretty it was one of the most memorable moments uh, as a head coach for me. Yeah, one of the wildest uh, final <laughs> three seconds you'll ever see in basketball. But we said uh, beyond that, just what that moment kind of meant for this team. It felt like it, it really was the turning point in the season. You guys really hit another gear after that. Uh, and then kind of looking at that uh, conference play, another great conference season for you. As we said, uh, you finished tied for second. That's the highest this team has uh, finished since 2003. But uh, I feel really kind of one of the, the signatures of this team was its performance on the road in conference play. We know how tough road games can be in conference. And you had some absolute standout performances on the road this year. Well, we always talk, just even in the beginning of the season, we always talk about this. Uh, you know, the great teams went on the road, uh, and you got to find a way to figure out how to win on the road. Had a tough schedule. We started out, and we had to go to South Florida. Uh, you know, we lost a tough one there. Um, but uh, I just think we was able to put everything together and learn and understand that we had to continue to keep growing day in and day out. And uh, it's just, again, I say this word over and over again, but their resilience. And the ability to listen to the staff and want to get better and follow the game plan. I think that was one of the things that was really great about this group. Uh, every time we put something in front of them, uh, a scouting report, they figured out how to make sure that we could carry that onto the floor. Uh, and that's why it was just really exciting to, to see us, uh, it, you know, and we talked about um, where we wanted to be uh, in that top two uh, of the league. And uh, so for us to continue to keep working and working to get there was, was really impressive with this group. And, you know, when we talk about conference play, uh, I mean, obviously there were, there were lots of highlights throughout conference play. And, you know, we can go back and talk through some of them. But to me, maybe the highlight of the whole season, you get to the AAC tournaments, uh, just a good run through the tournament. But that semifinal matchup uh, against uh, UCF, to me, that kind of almost – I feel like it's almost encapsulating everything this program has been through in your time here and kind of showing the kind of the kind of team you want to be. But to, to be down, well, I think it was about 15 points against a very yeah. good defensive team and to rally back. I think you held them to, what, three points in the third quarter. I mean, that that just showed so much. Uh, yeah, that uh, is it, still, you know, we have a lot of time on our hands now. So uh, uh, going back and uh, watching a lot of our games from last year to try to improve. Uh, you know, to see what we need to improve upon for us to get better for this season coming up. Uh, man, one of the best games. I, I tell you what, I, I've said this before, uh, won a lot of championships, done a lot of great things. And I know sometimes there's not a lot of moral victories, but 17 years huh, and uh, to come back the way that that team did and uh, just to put each other together and put each other on uh, their backs and just really just play together. It was incredible. And that third quarter was one of the best third quarters I've ever been a part of uh, just right after halftime coming out and locking in and doing what the staff and I talked to them about what we needed to do. And uh, it was just awesome. And uh, I, I think you said it right, Matt, this was for, for our program and for the history and uh, for us to be able to get to that point. That was our whole goal. Uh, we always talk about, and I know you hear me say you always around, you can't win a championship until you get to the championship game. Uh, and so that was always one of our biggest goals. And uh, so uh, we got there, fell short. Uh, but you know what? Uh, our, we're, we're growing and our program is growing. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, as we said, you know, just you, you look at year one, 
compared to, you know, the previous years, you look at year two compared to year one, you're really feeling that, uh, that, you know, continued uh, step up every year. And I thought that game really just kind of showed how far uh, you have come because, uh, you know, it, not many teams are going to win a game in, in that situation, but you, the Bearcats certainly did in that one. Uh, you know, now as we kind of shift gears looking ahead to next year, I think you have to be obviously very excited about uh, – he still have another year of Imari Thomas. I think the rest of the league probably isn't. But uh, her growth every every oh. year she has been here has been outstanding. And, you know, for her to be a unanimous uh, first-team selection, uh, it, it really feels like the sky is the limit with her. Well, I tell you what, she uh, you, you're right. Um, just to watch her growth and how far she's came since, uh, you know, the staff and I first arrived is amazing. Uh, her and I's relationship has grown uh, each and every day. She's uh, allowed me and the staff to push her uh, so she could get better and better. And, uh, you know, you're right, like the sky's the limit for her. Uh, and so just challenging her, uh, you know, through this time right now uh, and just continue to stay locked in and focused on uh, her opportunity to be able to lead this team. And uh, I know she's ready for that. I know she's ready to step up. Uh, and she's done a lot of uh, uh, amazing things. And, you know, she was huge for us in, in that semi game and how big she came up, uh, you know, against Central Florida in that second half. Uh, and so, you know, her ability and her IQ of the game, uh, it, it's just really incredible. And I just, I know that she's working every single day too to just con keep improving so she can be the best. So I'm excited. I'm excited for her in her senior year, definitely. Yeah, she's already had so many highlights uh, in her Bearcats career. And I think uh, we still have a, a lot more uh, in front of her uh, coming up as well. Uh, not only Imari coming back, but uh, you had a, a very young team uh, off the bench this year. A lot of very talented young players and freshmen and they had a chance to get uh, some, you know, some crucial uh, game moments. You know, we talked about Chella Watson and Jordan yeah. Tuff at the end of the VCU game, but uh, you really had a chance to get them in some big moments and you have to be excited about what they can do. Well, yeah, I, I think the biggest thing that I'm really uh, excited about is uh, we also, too, going to have another senior in Aram uh, who transferred and, and set out, uh, you know, last year. Uh, her and Amari are going to just be, I think, an incredible uh, addition together. Uh, you know, you have that uh, uh, four or five, that kind of uh, post combo thing. And, you know, Rom can shoot the three uh, very well and do a lot of different things. But you're right about the young ones. Uh, a day or more, uh, I think, is one of the ones that gave us a ton of minutes, was able to step in uh, in the starting lineup at times when uh, Florence was out or different things was, was going on with the team. Uh, and I think that that's something that I'm really excited for her uh, with those minutes and the things and her just her improvement. Uh, she has the ability to do a lot of different things. And, uh, you know, Chella, Chella is uh, so talented. Uh, and I think her uh, ability for her uh, opportunity for her to learn from her freshman year to this year is really going to help her a lot. Uh, and then, you know, we just uh, are continuing to just want to keep getting better. Uh, you know, Nez, I think, uh, getting better and growing. And we can't forget about the twins, uh, you know, and uh, Jada, uh, Jaden and uh, Jada have really worked to try to uh, get their self in position. And I think people saw that as the year uh, getting down toward the stretch was able to give us some minutes at times and really looking forward to that. But, uh, you know, I felt like something with losing, uh, uh, making sure that we uh, are getting better. Uh, and so I think the most important thing that happened too also uh, was we added a, a couple of pieces. Uh, and some junior college players that we're really excited about. They're going to be able to come in and, and be able to add some uh, some long distance, some three point shooting, which I think, you know, of course, we're losing Ant and and Sam, who really shot the three well for us. Uh, and then just some versatility, uh, you know, so uh, adding those, uh, you know, players, I think is going to be great for us. Uh, Caitlin. Uh, is going to have uh, three years uh, left uh, and coming from junior college and played uh, great. And then uh, also to uh, just uh, Milan Schimmel, uh, who uh, will have two years left, a combo guard, who, of course, I'm very familiar with her sisters and coached them at the University of Louisville. Uh, so uh, just excited about that. And along with all of our other freshmen. And so uh, it, it's going to uh, our incoming freshmen. So I know a lot of people, it's going to be some different faces. Uh, we're going to still be young. Uh, but I'm really excited about this group. And we also uh, have a, you know, we had to replace and, and get another point guard also too, because of Ant and add to that point guard spot. Uh, and we added a, a junior college All-American in uh, Destiny. So indeed, 
so uh, really, really excited. So uh, I feel like across the board that we're going to continue to keep growing and uh, we're looking forward to it, the staff and I. Yeah, you look at all the players coming in and uh, the credentials they bring are, are outstanding. And, uh, you know, if fans haven't had a chance to, to look look into, you know, what we've, uh, you know, had on GoBearCats.com, look into it because uh, there's some exciting additions coming to the team. And, you know, you talked about the, the junior college players. Obviously, we saw that with Florence Sifa, you know, you can kind of get a little, you know, extra maturity and experience you yes. know, with, the, with the JUCO player that, you know, a freshman might have to take the time to learn. But, uh, you know, kind of shifting gears, talking just about uh, kind of recruiting in general and, uh, and your philosophy with it. I remember when you first came to the program and, uh, you know, your opening press conference. And, uh, you know, when I had a chance to interview you the first time, you mentioned, uh, you know, what a great state Ohio is for girls high school basketball, how much talent there is around here and how, you know, you'd be putting such a, an emphasis on, on recruiting locally. And really, really excited about that. You know, and uh, Jillian Hayes, uh, you know, hometown uh, kid is was incredible for us and just really exciting. She's going to bring a lot of excitement to our team. She's just a phenomenal young lady, uh, has that whole pedigree of family uh, from, you know, mom playing uh, to Jackson being in the NBA and, you know, and then also to dad playing and, and coaching professionally. So I think that that's uh, that's the big thing. And, and you know, then we have another uh, and, and uh, Caitlin, also uh, another young lady from Ohio that uh, is going to be a big post presence for us. And so Ohio is, it's, it's very, uh, uh, has a ton of talent and very loaded. And I think that that's something that we tried to focus on and we're excited about that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, just across the board, uh, it's just, you know, I think we have the, a great job in, in being able to put pieces together. And I think the uh, assistant coaches and the staff, we all try to make sure that we find the pieces that we need for us to be successful. We, I am recruiting for, for us. We're really big on, uh, we wanted to get bigger. Uh, and wanted to get some more size so we could be able to have players be able to play multiple positions and do different things. That's kind of my philosophy and what I like. Uh, and I really believe that we, uh, the coaching staff and I did a great job of doing that uh, so we could put that product on the floor for us this upcoming season. And we're certainly excited to see, uh, you know, all these new players come in and, uh, you know, judging by the impact of the new players that have been brought in here uh, last, uh, you know, year, it's uh, it's a lot to be excited about. You know, you mentioned. Uh, recruiting and and kind of looking at things locally you know it's interesting you uh you know coming from louisville uh, melissa colby uh associate head coach uh from the cleveland area and uh you recently just made a, a new addition uh to your coaching staff uh yes. carlos knox who uh is from uh, the dayton area as well so you got a lot of uh, a lot of people on the staff that are, are very familiar with local basketball well i think that that's what's really important uh you know it's all about the connections that you have and Recruiting is a lot about connections, and uh, we're so excited to add Coach Knox to uh, to uh, our program and to our coaching staff. Uh, you know, uh, really uh, going to miss Coach Alexander. He did a phenomenal job uh, with our program, uh, but wishing him the best in his new endeavors with his family and just uh, all the things that he wants to accomplish. Uh, but Carlos Knox just brings a ton of uh, just experience in general, uh, not only as a player, uh, played a year uh in the uh, NBA uh, is the all-time leading uh, score at IUPUI uh, and uh, coached in the WNBA, won a, a, a championship with the Indiana Fever uh, and is really big uh, and known for a lot of his player development. Uh, and so really just excited about that. And uh, first and foremost, on top of all of that, just an amazing person with a great family and we're excited to welcome him. Yeah, we're certainly excited to have Coach Knox part of the program and uh, looking forward to seeing uh, what he can bring here in the in the seasons ahead. Well, uh, Coach, we're kind of winding down. One one question, though, I, I've been wanting to ask you uh, that I, I, I get from a lot of fans talking at, at games and just elsewhere. Uh, you know, it, it's obviously been a big news story with UConn uh, changing conferences, departing from the American. That obviously is going to, to make a big impact, uh, you know, a, a team that's never lost a conference game obviously changes things up a lot. How do you see that affecting just the kind of the dynamic of the conference? And I know we kind of chatted before that might also change how you, you schedule in the non-conference as well. <laughs> well, I think the biggest thing is you're right. Right now, uh, because of our league has, and, and to UConn's credit, they dominated and did a lot of great things. And, uh, you know, uh, we're wishing them well uh, as they move forward. But I think we have to make sure we look uh, forward to finding our, our identity uh, as a conference. And I think that, like, as you said, scheduling and everything else is really important. Uh, 
and we have to make sure that we're focusing on those things, but also just making sure that we can continue to grow this league. And that means everybody scheduling the way that we need to, uh, going out and being able uh, to put some wins on the column against great teams. And I think that we'll really, uh, we have some great coaches in this uh, conference. Uh, and so I have no doubt that we can continue to keep this uh, conference where it needs to be, where we can uh, continue to be a league where we can get two or three teams in. And that's really important. So I think as a, a program, uh, myself and all the other programs in the league, we have to step up and make sure that we are uh, doing the right thing so we can get better and better so uh, our league can grow. Yeah, I think uh, it really has been a, a plus, I think, in the last couple of years. Obviously, UConn has always kind of carried the banner of the AAC, but really in the last couple of years, you know, we've seen w with the rise of your program, we've seen UCF rise as well. We know, you know, Temple uh, has been very good. Tulane's been very good in years. You know, the, the depth South of Florida the is always good. South oh, Florida's how can I forget he, South Florida? He's always yeah. good and does a great job. And so, uh, and, and that's it what I like said. the depth of the conference, top to bottom, is, is maybe as good as it's ever been. Well, and I think that's the thing. That's why, you know, the first thing I mentioned was our scheduling uh, and us going out and we got to win games uh, at the end of the day. And our non-conference, I think that was something last year, uh, you know, just it didn't fall the right way. We, uh, a lot of people in the conference played some good competition but lost some of those games. We got to make sure that we're coming back and, and we're figuring out how to win those games and, uh, you know, making sure that if you can get, you know, great teams on your home court, you, you try to figure out how to get those wins. Or if you, you know, uh, with everything going on now, it's going to be really interesting because for a lot of the uh, nine power five schools, as they say, or, you know, for uh, different schools that are not in certain conferences, it's always get good sometimes to go to tournaments so you can have that opportunity uh, to be able to play those different schools. So now with the pandemic and everything going on, I think some of those things are going to change a lot. Uh, so I just think it's really important that looking at your schedule and making sure you put things together to make sure that everything is what it, where it needs to be so you can control what you can control. That's exactly what I say all the time and what we say as, as a staff. So that's what we're trying to do. And that's what our conference needs to do. Yeah, it's certainly uh, uncharted territory for everybody right now, and uh, everybody just going to have to adjust uh, as best as they can. Well, Coach, uh, we're kind of winding down here. Uh, before I let you go, just uh, want to say uh, thank you for taking the time to, to stop by with us. Great to always catch up with you. Uh, you know, one final word uh, for fans, uh, why they should be excited about next season. Uh, I just think uh, just look at the past two seasons and everything that we've done the, uh, these past two seasons. And we're doing nothing but growing more and more. Uh, this staff is so excited to get started. Um, we just look forward to the support and whatever that looks like uh, to make sure that uh, you all continue to keep supporting. And uh, just so excited uh, to be the head coach here at the uh, University of Cincinnati. Well, we're certainly uh, glad to have you, Coach, and uh, thank you again uh, for taking time out of your day to talk with us uh, here. I know we, we could probably go on all day. There's so much to talk about and so much to be excited about with this team, but uh, we'll leave off for now and uh, see maybe if we can uh, pick up again another time. But, Coach, again, thank you for joining us. Uh, please uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, looking forward to uh, catching up with you here again in the not-too-distant future. All right. You too. Have a blessed day. Thank you very much. All right. That's it, Coach. Michelle Clark, this has been Conversations with Coach here presented by Cincinnati.com on Bearcats Digital. We'll see you again soon.